We uh, propose to leave the floor now to our end note uh, speaker, which is Mr. Keir Fitch uh, from the European Commission, who's the head of unit at, at the DG Moon. And then we would like to uh, give the opportunity for you, for you who would like to ask more questions over the chat, discuss more to say after the speech of Mr. Kirfitch. Uh, so that's why we are a bit, a bit um, short on time now. So we will give the floor uh, to Mr. Fitch. We will then leave the opportunity to, to stay after for those who wish to discuss more and write more questions on, on the chat. So then we move that back to the Procter & Gamble office. I am. Can you hear me? Can you see me? Yes. Yes. No. Great. Good afternoon. Thank you very much for the, the opportunity to come and join this webinar. Uh, as many of you will know, the situation in Brussels is a little strange at the moment, so it's a pity if you couldn't all come and join us for the, the conferences. We've hoped that, uh, nonetheless, uh, at least we can make use of modern technology and actually show that some of the things we develop for, in this case, uh, audience logistics uh, deliver uh, what we hope from them. We have some problems here. Okay, is that better? Can you hear me? That's better. Yeah. Right. Okay. I, I should shout at the computer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I was just saying that uh, I'm very glad to be here. Um, it's obviously a pity we can't have the conference in the way we'd hope to have it. Uh, but uh, Brussels is a rather strange place to be at the moment, so at least we can demonstrate uh, the, the use of uh, modern technologies. As, uh, a way of going a little bit greener instead. In terms, though, of the work of Swiftly Green, I mean, I, I hope you've seen, and those of you following on the web have understood that actually a, a great deal of very interesting work has been done by the uh, consortium in terms of developing a toolbox. And I think the, the toolbox approach is probably something which, for future research, is also something uh, that we would really want to encourage because it's very clear that actually if you look uh, for logistic solutions and ways of uh, rolling out logistic solutions uh, to become really something which can be readily taken up by the industry. What we have traditionally tended to do of having large projects with sort of one size fits all solutions is probably not the, uh, the best approach and the easiest approach to getting delivery. So having a, a solution which actually consists of a, a range of different options, a range of different things that have been trialed working together but also potentially working separately, I think is something which has a great deal to offer in terms of allowing very rapid take up of the, uh, the options. In terms of the Commission's policy though, it's pretty clear that the objectives we set out back in the 2011 white paper remain very much valid. Uh, as you will know, there have been various discussions internally uh, within the Commission and with the stakeholders as to whether or not we should be fine-tuning, tweaking the white paper. But essentially, the underlying uh, message remains the same, that we have to meet uh, the very substantial objectives in terms of uh, decarbonisation, but at the same time, the very pressing objectives in terms of enhancing the capacity of our logistics systems uh, to uh, take on and deliver a much larger volumes of freight transport in the future and to do so in a way which is entirely uh, compatible with uh, the good economics in supporting the uh, European industry. So it's clear from that point of view as well that actually we need to help take up and deliver uh, the work of Swiftly Green and similar projects. You were asking in the final session, well, how do we take this work forward? And I think there are several things that we're hoping to do. Uh, one thing in particular, and again, it doesn't apply just to Swiftly Green, but to projects across the logistics sector, and indeed projects uh, from research in general, is that we're looking to build a much closer link between the work that is done in Horizon 2020 and the work that we then can actually take forward and deliver on the 10 Ts. You'll be aware, perhaps, that the, uh, the SEF program, uh, when it was set up in 2014, includes a pot of money which is particularly designated for the uh, delivery of uh, innovative projects on the, uh, on the 10 t network. Uh, this is something which there's already been some work on delivering, but we're now in very close uh, discussion.
discussions with our colleagues in the, the, the SEF director of uh, DG to look at how we can improve that work for the future. What we're hoping to do, and again, it will be following in a way the modeling we've already followed with Swifty Green, is actually to look at the output from future Horizon 2020 projects, but in the past also that which has come out of some of the FP6 and FP7 projects, and see where that is actually providing very good results that we believe can and should be marketed and built on the 10 Ts. And where we have those projects, we will aim to identify them and then talk with the 10T coordinators, uh, in particular, I think, to Pat Cox, who's obviously the coordinator who you've been working with most closely. And we will use that process uh, to actually ensure that Pat is aware of innovation, and we will work with him so that he can actually then go to individual parts of corridors uh, and explain what the innovative ideas are and help the people promoting the corridor projects to actually take that innovation into account and hopefully build it into the projects of the future. So we hope that with this approach, and as I say, it's very new, and we're in the process of drafting various reports that will go to Pat and the other 10 T coordinators over the next few months. But we hope with this approach, we will actually make a reality of the idea of linking Horizon 2020, uh, linking some of the very good research which is being done in a much more operational fashion that will deliver real results on the corridors. I think, again, the idea of looking at corridor governance solutions, looking at how we can build that into a, a system where there is actually the, the service structure there to deliver um, the, the greening of logistics along the corridors is, again, something of vital importance. Uh, that we see as being consistent very much with the move across transport to move beyond simply viewing systems as infrastructure and instead moving into the whole idea of mobility and logistics as a service. So this is again something that we will be working with our colleagues on the, uh, on the 10T side to see how we develop in future. But as I said, the, the objectives of the white paper remain as valid as ever. And in terms of delivering them, of course, you've gone a long way these iPhones trying to connect with the computer, which will no doubt cause uh, problems. Uh, the solutions you're developing in Swiftly Green are very important in helping us meet those targets, but it's also very important that we carry on uh, with further research work, and from that point of view, I would like very much also to invite you to, uh, to look at the 2016-2017 work program and join us in a number of the projects which we've uh, outlined in that work program, and which I hope uh, will um, take forward in a way much of the work that you've been doing already yeah, in Swiftly Green. And from that point of view, uh, as I say, I hope you've already looked at the work program, uh, but you'll see that there is a project uh, developing the potential of green transport in Europe uh, through echo labels and logistics, um, which again looks, I think, at further development of some of the areas we're looking at, uh, standardization issues. Uh, issues of harmonizing uh, emission reporting systems so that actually uh, sh shippers, logistics providers can compare different solutions on a fair and equal basis and on the basis of that choose the uh, most uh, environmentally friendly option, uh, all other things are equal, uh, and certification methods, accuracy of calculation methods to back up those products so that people really understand when they're buying a particular solution that it's not just greenwashing, but it really is delivering uh, a true improvement in emissions, in environmental footprints, etc. Uh, I mean, that's looking at uh, projects which are fairly small um, to help uh, join the, the various uh, existing ideas together. And, uh, of course, there are other important ideas also in the work program, which, again, you might wish to explore, uh, particularly in terms of looking at the uh, potential of the physical Internet, uh, the idea that actually we can develop routing systems based on Internet principles uh, so that when we start a logistic chain, we don't actually know precisely how something gets from one end of it to the other. There is real-time decisions based on optimizing the use of capacity Again, also, which allow uh, optimized use of capacity in that process, we also, of course, should be able to minimize our environmental impacts. Um, and then, finally,
finally, it will also the work program. Um, we're also looking at, of course, uh, further innovative use of IT solutions uh, and work on uh, the, the creation of networked and efficient logistics clusters. Uh, the, the clustering work, again, will be looking at improved governance models, uh, the use of modular load units, allowing automated handling, uh, allowing, again, work on imposing very high load factors, and, again, further work on uh, uh, optimizing the performance of logistics clusters, etc. That, that's a, a program looking for medium-sized research projects, uh, four to six million euros, probably. So um, things, again, that we hope to manage within the budget to get probably a couple of different projects, which, again, could do a lot of work, we hope, to continue to develop some of the ideas. Now, as I say, those are research projects, so they're in, uh, under Horizon 2020. But it's very important that as we develop those, we also continue to build, I think, hopefully in real time, connections between the people working on those projects and links with the uh, promoters of the 10 uh, with the coordinators like that, so that, again, there can be real time feedback into the projects uh, of your experience in rolling out some of the ideas under Swifty Green, but also in the real world needs of the, uh, the whole industry to ensure that work developed in those projects uh, continues to deliver things which we can actually very rapidly and readily use to deliver the uh, medium and long-term objectives that we have for logistics. So with that, uh, I would like to invite questions. Uh, very happy to try and answer a little bit more about how we uh, hope to take this work forward in the future, but also perhaps to hear some views from some of the people around the internet as to uh, how we can better make the, the link between Horizon and Tentee's work and ensure that actually the work we are now trying to build with the coordinators of the Tentee will deliver rapid results on actually really um, generate uh, long term benefits from the work we've done. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, for that, it's very uh, nice to hear that you also underline some of the things that we will bring up in the Green Corridor Development Plan. I would like to thank, thank you uh, to you, um, Mr. Kirpi. And um, we would also like to say uh, thank you to uh, all the participants um, of this uh, little bit special conference that we've had today. Uh, it's been a learning experience for us uh, as well, but it's um, maybe it's uh, the future way of saving CO2 to, to have these kind of meetings. It, it has worked, I think, very well uh, under the circumstances.